Hello and welcome to an in-depth review of Mattel's Winx Ballgown dolls. As a refresher, this line features all six of the main characters and is inspired by the gowns that they wore to the Heraklion Ball. These are probably some of the hardest Winx dolls to get, especially in decent or even complete condition, and they do tend to get very pricey, especially the better the condition. I was lucky enough to get all of these gorgeous girls off of eBay back in 2018 from a retiring collector. I still can't believe I got them, considering the fact that they're so hard to get, especially in the US. I saved myself a very big headache by getting all of them complete in one set. When I first saw all of them up for sale on eBay for a pretty cheap price relative to their condition, I kind of thought it was a scam because it was too good to be true. But it ended up being one of the best purchases of my life. Since there aren't that many videos on this line, I decided to do a super detailed review to help out other collectors that might be looking to make customs of some of the little accessories because I do know that the plastic is very brittle and breaks easily, or to help collectors figure out which pieces they're missing because they're so tiny. We'll be starting off with the doll that brings me the most sentimental feeling, this bloom right here. So all of these ones are just gonna move right on over. I used to have a ball gown bloom as a kid that I loved and treasured dearly, but I wore her down to rags and she was all tattered up, so I did end up having to sell her. But fortunately, I was able to get my hands on this perfect one right here. Now let's get up close and look at her details. Starting off with her hair, she's got slight waves at the very ends and features two extended bangs coming down her face. She also has this half bun on the top of her head that a pink flower hair piece is attached to. Mattel's attention to detail for these dolls is incredible because right next to the hair piece we've got a headband in a similar style and the center of each flower is painted blue. It's really intricate for an accessory of this scale and that's probably the most stunning part of her accessories. Her earrings are in the shape of a crystal and in the color of a solid dark blue. Her necklace matches the crystal look of the earrings because it has a gem in the middle and wraps pretty tightly around her neck. Her long lashes look so good, and here you can actually see a touch of glitter a little past her light blue eyeshadow. The purple lipstick matches the middle of the dress perfectly in terms of the similar shade. Her dress is a work of art in itself, it's so incredibly well done. The sleeves have ruffles on the sides and are multi-layered. The blue fabric of the sleeve has a small pink stripe of satin fabric going over it. Her dress has dark pink flower prints at the top and all throughout the sides, but not on the back. The mid-waist section features a pink tie to separate the top of the dress from the bottom and it has a fringy bow on the back, with glittery underlining decor on the outer sides. In the very middle part of her dress, there's a smooth pastel purple fabric going all the way down, which is really accurate to its animated counterpart. Four white trims line the front of the dress and separate each layer from the other. There's a coat of glitter on most parts of the dress except for the waistline tie and the purple middle part. At the very bottom, there's a mesh material with a dark pink stitched curvy line going through. This mesh is all around the dress and the overall dress is slim at the waist. It extends and gets fairly loose at the bottom, allowing for a total ball gown effect. She has whitish sleeves on her arms as well as pink rose bracelets on each one. They match her hairpiece pretty well because they use the same exact flowers. Her shoes are probably the most underwhelming part of her, but they're still really cute and go well with her overall look. They're heels with a mostly purple color and small pink details. They do feature these cute things that are designed to look like small stitches. Lastly, we have her purse. It has some paper in it to keep its round shape intact. It's mostly blue which matches the dress color and has a pink lace trim at the bottom and the same one is being used for the handle as well. The top of the purse is pulled together tightly by a very small, tiny thread next to which we see a rose piece just like the one on her bracelet. That's a wrap for Bloom. Now we're going to take a closer look at Flora. Her overall look really reminds me of a flower, especially a rose in bloom, and she's got these gorgeous layers that really resemble petals. My flower has definitely lost a lot of the definition in her curls, but it's originally meant to be curly starting from the middle and going downwards. The front of her hair is put up in a very small ponytail to prevent flyaways and allow the headpiece to stay in place through the use of a thin white thread. She also has two long extended bangs and in true flora fashion, they are lighter and differ from the rest of her hair in color. They have defined curls at the bottom. Her headband is light green with white being used as an accent color for the smaller details throughout. We see more of this green used on the flowers on the top of her sleeves as well as on her purse and the left side of the dress. The very top has a ruffled trim followed by a dark pink that extends to her sleeves. There's a silver gray thread that outlines the sleeves and chest part of her dress. 
On our stomach area, there's a light pink color with shiny silver spots and it's textured right here. The rest of our dress is so stunning because it's layered. The top layer is a pink purple that matches her sleeves, followed by a maroon layer that has a white mesh trim on the edge. Underneath that is a very small layer of a pink color, slightly lighter than the sleeve, along with a white mesh trim on the edge. This layer and the purple layer have thin silvery stripes that are hard to see unless the light hits them just right, but they're there. Now the very bottom layer right here is a light pink and is probably the least talked about for this doll. Not only does it have a very detailed white trim, beneath it is a light pink lace trim with cutout details and even silver sequins sewn in. This is amazing! Both of her hands have fabric bracelets made of a lacy material in the same maroon color as one of the layers of her dress. I think the variety of pinks and purples in the design of this doll and the cohesiveness with each other and the details is just gorgeous. Her shoes are a maroon color and look like strapped heels and they feature a light pink fabric bow put in through the tiniest hole in one of the straps of the shoe. Lastly, she's got the purse to finish off her look that has a pastel minty green handle strap. It's mostly light pink in color and has a purple satin fabric going around it. On the side of it is a plastic piece sewn on featuring a green flower as well as a very light blue transparent bunch of gem looking accessories. A similar plastic piece is featured on the left side of her dress, except it has a purple gem looking thing added in and is slightly longer in size as a result. Her makeup is very, very light pink eyeshadow followed by a thin hint of glitter which is also seen at the top of her light pink lipstick. And since all nature needs a bit of sun, here's Stella! She's definitely the star of the ball in her gorgeous gown, and one thing I find really interesting about all of the Stella dolls is none of them are exactly identical in terms of the dress. Every single doll has a slightly varying color scheme of this top layer of the dress that's meshy. Some of them are purple in color, others go from purple to orange, and like you can see on mine, it's completely orange. I don't know if it was done intentionally or if it was just an accident, but seeing all of the different variants really makes me want to get a second one, but adding this one to my collection was already hard enough. Her hair is long and straight with a part of it being sectioned off into a small ponytail to support her bangs. They go off to the left side with nothing being on the right except the slicked back hair. Her headband is probably my favorite out of all of these. It's light clear blue with two stars on one side and they're even textured with little circles. Her earrings are the longest out of all of these dolls going way past her neck. They match the light blue color of the headband and have various shapes. Notably, they have this dark blue added in on the sides. She has no necklace, but not to worry as the rest of her accessories on the sleeves and dress do more than make up for the lack of it. Her dress is asymmetrical at the top with the right side having a pink see-through sleeve with yellow glitter circles and purple lining as well as a dangling piece a little longer than her earrings extending past her waist. The other side has a thin blue strap with lines of light blue beads sticking out. The top is a pretty pastel purple with a second layer over the chest area and a light blue thread extending towards the longer sleeve. The yellow glitter circles are all throughout the dress. Her waist piece is also bright blue and thick on one side. The thinner side has the dangling two gems as well as this huge blue chunk. The rest of this doll's dress is a light pink color underneath a pleasant orange mesh fabric with glitter. At the bottom it has this stitching and flares out a little bit past the circular pattern. Her shoes are solid purple heels with a bow on the tops of them. The shoes are the only ones that aren't cohesive to the rest of the dress and that dark color isn't seen anywhere else in this look. Her purse also does seem a little random, a light pink clutch with silver reflective spots and a golden handle. It doesn't seem like a perfect pairing compared to the rest of the dress, but it's still gorgeous. Stella has the most intense glitter makeup out of the girls with a thick golden layer covering most of her eyelids and being placed on the top of her bright orange lipstick. Time for Stella to move over and share the spotlight with Musa. Her and Stella are tied with being my favorites from this line and it's really hard to pick one because Musa looks so elegant and extremely accurate to her show counterpart. She looks stunning and the dress reflects her personality super well. I love it when you can look at a doll and instantly tell that whoever made her put in so much love and effort into making her as perfect as she could be. Now let's zoom in and take a closer look at this masterpiece. Her hair is mostly dark blue with lighter strands added in which looks gorgeous under the light. The very top of her hair is in bangs and it goes towards the right side of her face and stops at the top of her ear. 
a small portion of it is put into a thin clear hair tie in the back and the rest of it is straight and loose. It's really long and goes past her waist almost down her knees. Her hairpiece is so pretty. It has stars at the end that branch in towards the middle where they meet another star. The gold color is everything here. She has an almost nude colored pinkish eyeshadow with a light blue line going around it and her lips are a bold red with glitter. Her dress is the same bold red as her lips and the stars on her hairpiece. It's strapless but it does have see-through clear straps to hold it in place. Sadly, these do tend to rip easily due to age and get slightly discolored, going from see-through to a yellowish shade. Her earrings are similar to the gems featured on Flora's dress piece and purse, but they have a more opaque color to them that isn't as see-through. They're very long and curve in towards her necklace, which is two layers of gold with a blue gem on the bottom one and a red star in the middle of the top one. They're actually two separate necklaces held together by a clear plastic tie. The very top of her dress has two layers sewn to it, the bottom one is dark pink and a fabric slightly thicker than mesh, while the top one is light pink and meshy. The very edges of both of these are outlined by sparkly white fabric. The middle of her dress has golden colored threads going around, all the way back to where it velcros in. The threads meet in the middle at a blue gem from which two long threads extend and dangle with a blue star and small gems beneath it. The rest of the dress is red and has a light pink mesh coating around it, also outlined by sparkly material all throughout. Both of her arms have these gorgeous golden colored pieces wrapping around with blue at the tops. Her shoes are strappy heels with a glitter coating. Her purse reminds me of an umbrella. It's the same red color as her dress, but it has a golden thread for a handle and a small outline near the tip of it. At the bottom, there's the same dangling gem material. Although not very practical and probably very inconvenient in real life, this purse looks quite pretty paired with the doll. It even has a red thread outlining the opening of it to make it seem tighter and add these waves. Time to move on to Tecna. She has this long extended piece of her hair, but it's nothing compared to the waist length hair of the other girls. Her dress definitely stands out from the others because instead of being a warmer color, she has this bright green and she has the most detailed shoes. She has short pink and purple hair, which is slightly longer on her right side. Her headpiece is a textured light blue headband with a seaweed looking design on the right side. Light pink earrings in the shape of stacked circles match a small pink circle at the very tip of her necklace, which is mostly a light blue. Her dress is in a mermaid style similar to Bloom's, where the top is tight and the bottom flares out a little bit. The primary color is a bright green with pink and sparkly stitching outlining the sleeves of it. The mid-waist section is a dark pink, highly detailed stitch that matches the hints of pink we see throughout her look. The bottom of the dress features multiple layers and is asymmetrical with one side flaring off and extending, while the other shows a little past her ankle. Each layer of the dress is topped off at the edge with a dark pink thread and followed by sparkly stitching. Her shoes are stunning, matching the rest of her hairpiece they have this textured look to them with a maroon colored sole. This green gem detail is so impressive. Her purse handle is circular with light blue and purple flowered accents. She also has this bracelet right here. Her makeup consists of a maroon lipstick with light glitter and pink eyeshadow outlined by purple and sparkly glitter at the top of the eyelid area. Now to wrap things up, we're going to finish off with Layla. Or Aisha, depending on whichever dub and language you watch the show in. She's the only one out of all six that's not wearing a dress. Her top is separate from her skirt and they're actually two different pieces. Her hair is long and wavy, but the general texture of it also feels different from the rest of the girls. She has dark colored hair with brown highlights added in. A small section of it is tied in the back of her head with two long bangs hanging down. Shockingly, she has no earrings. However, she does have a clear purple necklace with textured details and gems hanging down. Her dress is a mermaid style, featuring two pink thin straps followed by a very colorful midsection that sparkles and has a light blue going through it. Fun fact, her dress is actually a shirt and skirt put together. The skirt is layered with translucent yellow colored fabric underneath this gorgeous purple. The bottom of the purple layer has a dark lace pattern. Her right hand has a long piece of aquamarine fabric extending from it. It's got a somewhat stiff feel to it and is transparent. She has a purple bracelet made to look like a double bracelet on her left hand, paired with a clutch purse with a golden thread as a handle, very similar to Musa's. Her shoes are my least favorite part of her look, they're green with a square gem in the middle. Her makeup features light purple glitter lips, pinkish eyeshadow, and a slightly thicker layer of glitter than the one Bloom has. To think that these were all mass produced, considering their details, is insane. We don't even get collector dolls that are anywhere close to this level these days, 
Cough, cough. Looking at you, $100 Barbie. Looking at today's Playline dolls with plastic molded on clothes and no accessories such as earrings, it makes me feel really sad for the kids of today because they'll never have dolls that look this good. Looking at these Playline dolls and comparing them with the modern Barbies really makes you see Mattel's decline in quality. Their minor negatives such as bland shoes or weird looking purses are definitely outweighed by the fact that they have so many positives such as their gorgeous dresses, their long hair, and their beautiful makeup. Their details will never cease to impress me and I can see why this is such a loved line by many collectors. It's my favorite too. What do you think about these dolls and would you change anything about them?